Hello, um, I'm Rob Phillips from the Welsh Political Archive at the National Library of Wales in Aberystwyth. And today um, I'm going to be talking about the archive of Gareth Vaughan Jones. Gareth was a journalist who was born in Barry and Glamorgan in 1905, um, studied at the University of Aberystwyth and the University of Cambridge before working for David Lloyd George, and then a career as a journalist working for a number of titles. Um, and also travelling the world, where he reported on a number of significant events, including the rise of the Nazis in Germany, and of course the Holodomor in the Soviet Union in the 1930s. I came across Gareth uh, because uh, I worked on his archive here at the library. Um, I've been privileged to deal with his diaries, his correspondence, his photographs, and, uh, and, and it's all very fascinating. Um, but today I'd like to introduce uh, somebody else who has a long contact with Gareth Jones and who has uh, studied his work uh, and his life, and that is Professor Lubomir Luchik, uh, who is joining me today uh, to discuss Gareth and his, uh, and his influence and his work. Uh, so, uh, Lubomir, uh, could I ask you just to say something about your contact with Gareth Jones, please? Certainly, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, my relationship, as it were, with Gareth Jones goes way back to the 1980s, the late 1980s, when I was doing archival research in Kew Gardens, actually, in the British National Library and Archives, and looking into what Gareth Jones had written about the whole of the war, the genocidal Great Famine of 1932-33 in Soviet Ukraine. He was the first journalist to unambiguously state that this was... A, a massive famine causing millions of casualties and that was deliberate, that was politically orchestrated. And so with my colleagues, we put out a book called The Foreign Office and the Famine. Uh, the title tells you what it was about, which demonstrated that the British government actually covered up the famine. And that came out in 1988. And it was there in those archival research period that I first heard of Gareth Jones. Uh, subsequently, I had the opportunity to meet with members of the Cauley family. You mentioned Margaret Cauley and Nigel Leeson Cauley, both now gone, unfortunately. But working with the family, we were able to install uh, a plaque uh, in uh, Wales at the University of Aberystwyth, uh, honoring Gareth Jones for his intrepid coverage of, of the famine. Um, that was a great moment in my life because it was the first, the world's only, I think, uh, Gaelic uh, Welsh Gaelic, uh, English Ukrainian plaque, and it's there in the Great Hall at the University of Aberystwyth. So that was in 2006. Later, working with the family took a while, but we published his 1933 diary under the title Tell Them We Are Starving, uh, with an introduction by Professor Ray Gamash. And of course, that's all, you know, moved forward. So now there's a film, Mr. Jones, uh, came out in 2019. Um, and we have been working with you and your colleagues uh, to make sure that all of the Gareth Jones material is available. So the digitization project we're talking about today comes out of that, an experience that goes back to 1988 and is carried forward with things like a historical plaque, um, a book, several books now because Professor Gamash has gone on to do other work in the, in the papers. And of course, working with your library and archives, a very important thing, making sure that the Gareth Jones record is available to scholars everywhere in Ukraine, in, across Europe, uh, indeed around the world. And so I'm very grateful to, to your library and archives for uh, accepting our, uh, our proposal uh, and working with us to uh, get this done. Well, it is fantastic. And of course, thanks to the, uh, the money you've raised and work with the Canadian, uh, Ukrainian Canadian Civil Liberties uh, Foundation, Ukrainian National Women's Leave America and the Temerity Family Foundation, we're able to digitize uh, a significant amount of the archive, uh, and it's now available online for anyone to see, which is uh, which is absolutely fascinating. Um, of course, you have worked with the archive. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your experience working with the archive? Well, I mean, my uh, my relationship specifically with your archive has been to try to, as you say, make sure that Gareth Jones's. Uh, understanding and his perspectives and his coverage of a number of significant events. Of course, from our, from our point of view, it's the whole of the more that's the most interesting. But as you mentioned, Gareth Jones covered the rise of Nazism. He was a, an astute observer of his times and a very intelligent young man who, of course, may well have paid for his um, frankness with his life, because of, as, as we all know, he was murdered in uh, Manchuko in 1935 very probably, I think, by, by Soviet agents because of what he'd written about the famine. Um, so working with the, with the archives, 
my my experience has been very positive, frankly. Um, you immediately accepted the notion that the entire body of Gareth Jones's uh, collection should be digitized. Of course, we want the originals to stay exactly where they belong, which is right behind you. Um, we want the originals to be where Gareth Jones would have wanted them to be, but making available digitized copies through uh, partner libraries, and, we're, and as you know, we're negotiating that now, but it'll be something like the Library of Congress, National Library of Ukraine, uh, two at the University of Toronto Library, a few, uh, other institutions around the world so that there are, there's no way that someone looking for Gareth Jones won't be able to find his material and uh, online in a safe way and preserved for all time. So thank you. I mean, the Temerte Foundation, the Ukrainian Canadian Civil Liberties Foundation and the Ukrainian National Women's League of America uh, all saw in your archive, a very good partner, someone we could work with and get this done in short order. And it's been, you know, from the time we originally proposed this to now, it's been, you know, a couple of years, somewhat interrupted by the pandemic, of course, but uh, we're hoping that next uh, May, we might even have an occasion to visit again uh, to Wales and, uh, un, you know, officially uh, announce the, the, the creation of this collection and its availability. That would be, of course, the 90th anniversary of the Holodomor. So it has all sorts of, you know, evocative symbolic value as well. Well, it'd be great, great to have you here for that. And and looking at the collection, I mean, it, it it's it's very varied. It contains you know, things like photographs, drafts of articles, um, a lot of Gareth's notebooks, his diaries, the diaries that he wrote while he was uh, in Ukraine in 1933, which are quite uh, quite striking when you read those sort of correspondence. Uh, uh, so it, it's a it's a fascinating collection, and obviously we've had to work with you on. Uh, prioritizing what we digitize. We'd like to make much more of it available. And we, we hope to do more of it uh, in the future. But um, could you say a little bit about the things we discussed in terms of you know, what we prioritized and, and, and why we chose the items that we have to, right. uh, to well, do first of all? Well, I mean, the, the priority from the point of view of the Ukrainian diaspora, if I can call it that, is really the material that Gareth Jones left for us about the famine, what he saw. I'll, I'll always remember when Nigel uh, Colley brought uh, the famine diary, the 33 diary, actually to North America, and I got to hold it in my hands. I mean, this, I keep a diary, so I know something about what it feels like to write in a diary and to have Gareth Jones's diary in my hand and know that he actually had this and was writing in it when he was in Soviet Ukraine during the famine was remarkable. So our priority was, of course, making sure that information is available because Gareth Jones suffered for telling the truth. I mean, he was routinely abused by people like Walter Duranty, the New York Times, who said it was all nonsense, there was no famine and so on. Gareth Jones took a stand and he was courageous and as I say, probably paid for it with his life. Um, and it was denied. He, he, the famine was denied routinely by the Soviets and now still to this day by the Russian Federation. So our, our priority was the materials having to do with his experiences in Soviet Ukraine, Soviet Union, and then of course, broadening that, his experiences in Europe during this time, because as you mentioned, uh, he sat on a plane with Adolf Hitler and, and wrote a note about how, you know, history would change if that plane went down. And yes, indeed it would have. Um, so there were the posters, the photographs, um, his, his observations of uh, daily life in the Soviet Union, even that is important. You know, what did it cost uh, a person to buy a loaf of bread? What were people saying? What were people talking about? Um, and as you know better than I, because you've worked more closely with the diaries, but, you know, he would scribble sometimes in Gaelic so that no one else could read it. <laughs> and his, his handwriting, of course, um, left something to be desired. Um, I, I, I think I sympathize with him because mine's a scribble too. But when you look at his diaries and you see he's using multiple languages and he's using kind of codes and, and he's scribbling things on the sides of pages and so on, it, it's, you can see a man who's looking at this catastrophe and trying to make some sense of it and risking his own person by doing that. Because remember, he went out into the countryside with no permission from the Soviet authorities and he was eventually caught and brought back. Now, 
I know films like Mr. Jones, for obvious reasons, exaggerate what he experienced and exaggerate how long he was out in the countryside. But that doesn't matter. That's that's artistic license. It's beautifully filmed, by the way, I, I think. Um, the point is, there's this body of information, this, this perception from a young, brilliant man, uh, a, a real journalist. And we could use more journalists like Gareth Jones in the world today, that's for sure. Um, and he's telling us, he's leaving uh, an image, a, a sense of what he encountered. So, you know, that was our core thing. I mean, the, the Temerte Foundation, um, the Ukrainian National Women's League of America and the Civil Liberties Foundation here in Canada, as Ukrainian organizations, we want the world to know what Gareth Jones saw in that time. Now, you know, there's his diary, which we've published, Ray Gamash has done his work. We've, we've had the Foreign Office and the Famine out for decades. And, and unfortunately, the message that, the British government, which was of course then the great power of the world, knew what was going on and deliberately covered it up. Um, you know, it still shocks me to this day. I mean, Great Britain has not yet recognized the whole war as the genocide that people like Raphael Lemkin, the father of the UN Genocide Convention, convention defined it as. So, you know, if the if the father of the of the very word definite uh, genocide, sorry, if the father of the very word genocide called the famine a genocide, I think it was that the British, I mean, no one used the term genocide 1933-34, of course, but the fact that the British knew that millions of people were dying and said nothing, and in fact said, we don't want to say anything because it would upset the Soviets, that's unconscionable. And I think maybe making available these diaries and, and all the other Gareth Jones materials uh, now may move, and I would certainly hope it moves Mr. Johnson's government to uh, doing the right thing finally and saying, yes, this was a genocide. And if the Russian Federation doesn't like it, so what? Uh, it's the right moral thing to do. So from our point of view, that's, that's you know, why we invested in this. But it's broader than that. Students of European history in the 20th century need access to Gareth Jones's documents. He is, you know, one of many, but an important observer of the European scene. Uh, as you mentioned at the outset, I mean, he was an advisor to the, the former prime minister. He uh, was a young, a young man, of course, who was on his way up before he was cut down. And uh, you know, again, that speaks to the truth of Gareth Jones's vision and what he, what he recorded. I mean, there was, a, you know, I, I grew up, I'm old now, and I grew up when there were still journalists in the world. And I, and, I, and I read Gareth Jones and I say, this was a man reporting what he saw as best he could and letting readers think about what he was observing and putting it into some context for them, but not necessarily lacing every other, you know, every paragraph with his own opinions. He reported and, you know, he reported the truth and paid for it with his life. Maybe that's why so-called journalists today uh, don't <laughs> report. They instead tell us what they think, which is a different thing. I mean, it's not, there's nothing wrong with opinion editorials, but I don't think that's what Garrett Jones left us. I think he was a, a recorder, an observer, an astute one, an intelligent one, a compassionate man. And, you know, as I say, I've said it before, he told the truth and he paid for it with his life. And that's, uh, you know, that's the ultimate sacrifice for humanity. And I think that's really where Gareth Jones's legacy comes down. He paid the ultimate sacrifice for telling the truth. And so he's inspirational. Uh, if I were a student at the University of, of Ariswith or a Welsh, uh, you know, a Welshman or a Welshwoman, young or old, I'd be very proud of this man uh, because he is, you know, he is for, for an entire other nation called Ukraine, a hero a real hero, a righteous man, a man who we will never forget. And uh, so, you know, that's an interesting bond between uh, today's free Ukraine fighting for its freedom against Russians yet again, and, uh, and Wales, which has had its own troubled history with imperial powers. So um, I, I love all these connections. To me, this is, this is what makes the kind of work that I started doing, you know, 30 plus years ago, uh, still exciting to this very, very day. And having the opportunity to meet people like yourself and work with you to, to preserve that legacy and to preserve that history. Uh, wow, what a, what a privilege. I'll use your word. It was a privilege, an honor, and a duty. And it's all come together now with this, with this project. So thank you. 
Well, it's, it's fantastic that he said, and, and it, it's great to speak to somebody so enthusiastic about about Gareth and about and about his book. I just wonder what you think that he might feel uh, as someone of his time, uh, yeah. but how he might feel about the use of technology, about digitization, about having his archive available to view over the internet. What do you think he'd say about that if he was if he was here today? Oh. Uh, you know, I think he'd be delighted. I mean, I, when I, when I, you, you, you shared that question with me before, so I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell your audience that this is, you know, I'm expecting this question, but the reality of it is, it's great. I mean, he was a man who tried to tell a story and found himself butting up against much more powerful individuals. You know, Walter Durante was an odious character. Malcolm Muggeridge called him the greatest liar I ever met in, in, in the world of journalism. But Malcolm Muggeridge, you know, in, in correctly characterizing Durante as a villain, nevertheless doesn't say that Durante was foolish or stupid. Durante was a great writer. Durante was a very intelligent man. He's not some cartoon character villain. He was influential like very few other people in his time. And he suppressed the truth that Gareth Jones was trying to tell. So Gareth Jones was a young man, wanted to be a journalist, had all the skills, had the passion, brought it to the field, told the to truth, and found himself not just being bullied by uh, a more powerful journalist, and I'll put that in quotation marks, but by one of the great journalists, quote unquote, of his time, Walter Durante. So he was publicly denigrated. He was uh, abandoned, frankly, by Lord George. He was um, expelled really from all the kind of circles that he would have wanted to move in um, because he told the truth. And then he found himself going into another arena in Manchuko where whether it was bandits or Soviet operatives, whatever, he was murdered. So he couldn't tell the stories he wanted to tell. And you see that in his diaries. You see how he writes about how he visions his own role. Um, he was stopped from that. So 86 years after his death, what are we doing? We are putting what he recorded at the time out into the world. There's no one can stop this now, right? Too bad it didn't exist at his time. Looking at it from our time, what we've done is we've actually returned Gareth Jones. We've given him a voice again. It was a voice cut short. It was a voice that should have continued reporting on what he would have encounters. Um, that, that's the tragedy of Gareth Jones. But what we've done, and I think he would approve, I mean, obviously it's hard to sort of tell, but I think he would approve that we've actually now forever beaten Durante. Durante uh, and, and all the other deniers tried to suppress the truth. Gareth Jones tried to tell the truth and paid for it with his life. And now we've broadcast that fact. I think back in 88 and in the early 1990s, I mean, the whole truth about Durante's role came out. There was, of course, a campaign to have his Pulitzer Prize revoked in 2003. Um, <clears throat> Today, Durante's name is, is befouled. Um, Durante is now recognized as a liar, uh, as someone who was mendacious in, in his reporting. The fact that he still retains his Pulitzer Prize is frankly, again, um, rather unconscionable, but so be it. Gareth Jones deserved a Pulitzer Prize. Uh, Gareth Jones is now going to be heard about a large number of things, not just the whole the more. And I think he would, I think, you know, there's no comfort in, in a young man his age being murdered, uh, but there's some comfort in thinking that his truth, the truth he tried to tell is never now going to be suppressed. Uh, and that, that I think is the miracle of what we're doing. Uh, I'm a religious person, so I'll, I'll say it that way. It, it's the, the truth has come out. The truth will set us free, right? And, and that, I think, is what Gareth believed in. Um, I don't know what his religious views were, actually, when I think about it, but I think he believed that the truth will set you free, you know, from John in the Bible. Um, and now that truth is out there. And uh, so 
you know, we have a tradition in the Ukrainian Christian Catholic Orthodox world where we, you know, talk about um, a spirit wandering the earth for 40 days after death before it, you know, its business is done and it goes up. I think Gareth Jones somewhere is smiling at, at this and thinking, you know, it, it's finally out there. It's been out there in films and books, of course, for a decade plus now, but th this, this finally makes it available. His words, not Lubomir Lechuk interpreting him or, or Ray Gamash interpreting him or other colleagues interpreting him. Gareth Jones's own words, the way he wrote them down, will now be available to someone in Kiev or someone in Moscow or someone in Beijing or someone in Washington or in Kingston, Ontario or Aberystwyth, with Wales, right? And then think about it yourself. Don't have Lubomir Lechuk tell you why it's important. Don't have Ray Gamash tell you why it's important. Don't ask Mr. Putin why it's important. Decide for yourself, right? That's fine. And I, I think is what we've managed together. So again, the, the alliance, the collaboration, the, the working together has proven to be very fruitful. And as I say, I can speak on behalf of all those organizations you've mentioned earlier. We are very grateful to the National Library and Archives of Wales for your, uh, your fine work, your collaboration, your support and your enthusiasm for this project. Well, thank you. It's been absolutely delightful to speak to you and hear somebody with such enthusiasm for Gareth and, and, and his archive uh, talk about it so much. For those interested, um, the papers that we've digitised so far are available on the website at www.library.wales slash Gareth Vaughan Jones. They're able free of charge anywhere in the world and anyone can see them. Uh, thank you very much for joining me today. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you. Thank you. My pleasure.